Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer. Today we'll be looking at topic 3.3.3, digestion and absorption from the AQA A-level biology specification. As always, let's start by taking a look at our specification. It begins with an introduction to digestion, then moving on to specifically the digestion of carbohydrates, lipids, including the action of bile salts, as well as the digestion of proteins. Then we need to know the mechanisms by which the different products of digestion are absorbed. So let's make a start. Biological molecules such as proteins and starch are too large to cross cell surface membranes. Therefore, they cannot be absorbed directly into the blood. During digestion, these large biological molecules are hydrolyzed into smaller products that can be absorbed across cell surface membranes. These smaller products then pass into the blood to be transported around the body to wherever they're needed. In exams, always remember to use the word hydrolyzed, not breakdown. Often in examiner's guidance on the mark scheme, the word hydrolyzed is the only accepted option and they explicitly tell examiners to reject answers using the wording breakdown. By the way, it's a hydrolysis reaction because the large biological molecules in our food, such as proteins and starch, are polymers. And if you remember from the beginning of our specification, the reaction that converts polymers into their smaller monomers is a hydrolysis reaction. To recap monomers and polymers, just follow the link top right. Note that a variety of different enzymes are produced by specialized cells in the digestive system. These are then secreted into the gut to mix with food and catalyze their respective hydrolysis reactions. So let's start off with carbohydrate digestion. This involves the hydrolysis of glycosidic bonds. Disaccharides such as maltose, sucrose and lactose are hydrolyzed by disaccharidase enzymes to give the monosaccharides which make up the disaccharide. To recap mono and disaccharides, just follow the link top right for my video on carbohydrates. For disaccharide hydrolysis, it's easy to remember the name of the enzyme which catalyzes each reaction. You just need to change the ending of the name of each disaccharide to A's. So maltose hydrolysis, for example, is catalyzed by the enzyme maltase to produce two glucose monosaccharide molecules. Sucrose hydrolysis is catalyzed by the enzyme sucrase to give glucose and fructose. And finally, lactose is hydrolyzed by lactase to produce glucose and galactose. Note that starch, another carbohydrate, is hydrolyzed by the enzyme amylase to give maltose, which then requires maltase to be hydrolyzed further. So where are carbohydrates enzymes produced? Note that there is no carbohydrate digestion in the stomach as stomach enzymes only digest proteins. There are two types of amylase, salivary and pancreatic. Salivary amylase is produced by the salivary glands and pancreatic amylase is produced by the pancreas and is then secreted into the small intestine via the pancreatic juice. Note that some disaccharidases are membrane bound, meaning that they are attached to the cell surface membrane of epithelial cells lining the ileum. This is very useful as it means the monosaccharides are released directly at the epithelial cells lining the ileum minimizing the diffusion distance into the epithelial cell, which increases the rate of monosaccharide absorption. So how are the monosaccharides then absorbed? I like to remember the fact that the two monosaccharides beginning with the letter G, that is glucose and galactose, are absorbed by active transport with sodium ions via a co-transporter protein. For the video on co-transport in the ileum, just follow the link top right. Fructose, on the other hand, is absorbed via facilitated diffusion through a different transporter protein. Next, we have lipid digestion. This involves the hydrolysis of ester bonds. A triglyceride is hydrolyzed to produce one monoglyceride, that is, a glycerol that is bound to one fatty acid and two fatty acids. 
This hydrolysis is catalyzed by lipase enzymes, which are produced by the pancreas and are secreted into the small intestine via the pancreatic juice. The specification also wants us to consider bile salts, which play a key role in the absorption of the products of lipid digestion. Bile salts are produced by the liver. They lower the surface tension between lipids and water, causing large drops of lipid to split into smaller ones. This is known as emulsification, a key term to remember. Emulsification increases the surface area for lipase enzymes to act upon, increasing the rate of lipid hydrolysis. The monoglycerides and fatty acids then stick to the bile salts to form micelles, which help move the monoglycerides and fatty acids to the epithelial cells lining the ileum. The micelles constantly break up and reform so they can release their monoglycerides and fatty acids, allowing them to be absorbed. Finally, we need to consider protein digestion. Proteins are hydrolyzed by a number of different proteases, and this involves the hydrolysis of peptide bonds to form amino acids. The three types of protease you need to know are endopeptidases, exopeptidases, and membrane-bound dipeptidases. Endopeptidases hydrolyze peptide bonds within polypeptide chains, endo meaning inside. Exopeptidases, on the other hand, hydrolyze peptide bonds at the ends of polypeptide chains, exo meaning outside. And finally, membrane-bound dipeptidases. Just like membrane-bound disaccharides, these are bound to the cell surface membrane of epithelial cells lining the ileum. Dipeptidases hydrolyze peptide bonds in dipeptides specifically. Note that these enzymes are most effective when working together, as endopeptidases increase the number of ends for exopeptidases to act upon until we're left with just dipeptides, which are then hydrolyzed into amino acids by dipeptidases. So how are the amino acids then absorbed? This is done in a similar way to glucose and galactose by co-transport with sodium ions. Finally, we'll have a look at some of the adaptations of the ileum. In exams, you are often required to state both the adaptation and then explain it. So remember both parts. For the first example, the ileum is very long, which therefore allows time for the diffusion and for the active transport of the products of digestion. Or the lining of the ileum is folded into millions of projections called villi. These are themselves folded into many microvilli, which therefore creates a large surface area for diffusion. The epithelial wall is only one cell thick creating a short diffusion path for the products of digestion. The villi also have a rich blood supply, maintaining a favorable concentration gradient for the diffusion of products of digestion. The epithelial cells also have many mitochondria, which provide energy for the active transport of products of digestion. Again, as mentioned before, the fact that many enzymes are membrane bound means the products of digestion are released directly at the epithelial cells lining the ileum, which minimizes the diffusion distance into the epithelial cell, increasing the rate of the absorption of the digestion products. Great, that would be all parts of our specification covered. We've given an introduction to digestion, had a look at carbohydrate, lipid, and protein digestion, and how each of the products of the individual reactions are absorbed. That would be it. Thanks guys for watching Spec Transfer. Subscribe, add any ideas, comments, or suggestions. See you next time.